Happy October, Wood County Republicans. My name is Tiffany Denzik, and I have the privilege of sitting here with Mr. Jim Carter, former uh, Wood County Commissioner. Mr. Carter, would you like to introduce yourself and give a little bit of your background, please? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Jim Carter, I was uh, graduated back in 1957, and from then I started working with people, working at the gas station all the time I was uh, going to school, and then I went to the Army and learned surface to air muscle systems and worked with a bunch of people there. And when I come home, I uh, started talking about politics. Became uh, mayor of Grand Rapids for, for 16 years after that. And during that period of time, I was able to put in a sewer system, which was a must if you're going to have an apple butter fest. Absolutely. You needed restrooms. When you, you invite people from a long distance away, yeah. you better have a place that they can use the restroom and clean up a little bit when they get there. So we got uh, that part done, and the water system was finally doing some good. And then uh, some ladies came to me as mayor and said, we need a historical society. Okay, what are we going to do? We don't have a building. We don't have any money. Well, we still need a historical society. Okay. So we formed one. And then the question was to them, okay, now what are we going to do? And so the folks all got together and said, well, we should do something to explain to our children what we used to do. Mm -hmm. well, what is our history here? And so from that, uh, we decided we'd have a Sunday afternoon in the park. Just a few people get together, have some coffee and donuts, and do some things that some of our folks used to do. And, and from that, the next year we said, well, let's do a little bit bigger, and the next year was a little bit bigger, and the next year was a little bit bigger, and now it's almost out of control. <laughs> a few hundred thousand people is out of control? <laughs> well, <laughs> you, don't, you can't count people, because when you look at a ball game, Everybody's parked. They all buy a ticket. They all go into the ball game. When they come out, they leave. But at the Apple Butter Fest, people come at dark, and they leave at dark, and they're coming and going all day long. The parking spots just keep turning over, and uh, we've got all kinds of people helping out. And uh, so it's tough to say a hundred thousand or even fifty thousand, but there's a bunch. <laughs> I know when I'm working down there, it looks like a lot of people because as far as the eye can see, that street is packed with just nothing but people. You go up to the pool, it's packed with people. You go yep. to the old high school, it's packed with people. Well, one thing they have done at the Apple Butter Fest is uh, if you're on Main Street, the very Main Street, which is the actual Apple Butter Fest activities, mm -hmm. you're going to be listening to uh, uh, folks who have been paid to come there to demonstrate or to play in the band or to do children's activities and if you're on Main Street uh, you have to bring things that you've made mm -hmm. or your family has made and you have to be judged as to whether you get along with the folks that come to visit you and if they have a problem that you solve that problem so otherwise it's uh, the other areas are you buy it as is mm -hmm. and uh, that's the way it goes. Well, you guys have done a great job with it. I remember my first Apple Butter Fest, very vaguely, October 1977. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, first of all, I, I should say that in order to have that Apple Butter Fest, we were in the process of putting a sewer system together at that point in time. So it was a little bit crowded on some of the areas, but we, we actually was able to do that. And the very first one, we used the Boy Scouts for traffic control, and we used uh, other groups that made uh, buffalo burgers and baked beans. And The idea is if you are a organization and you want to work at the Apple Butter Fest, it's a one-day event, rain or shine is a one-day event, the money that you make that day is yours. You don't pay the, the Grand Rapids people any money to come there. You don't have to. The only thing you got to do is pay to park. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is we have to pay the farmers who we rent the ground from to park. And then we have to pay the bus people to haul the folks back and forth from the parking areas. And we have to worry about the sheriff uh, 
taking care of the traffic control. And so it's a it's a, a organization that works very well because everybody wants to do their job and it's all volunteerism. Mm -hmm. The historical reenactment, that's so very important because now kids have computers in front of them, their phone is an entire computer, more than what launched the space shuttle years and years and years ago. So talk to me a little bit about what brought on the whole historical reenactment and how important that is to show what happened. The actual historical event mm -hmm. itself? Or the reenactments along the towpath, et cetera, because that's all how life used to be. Yes, uh, well, the canal system was what served the village of Van Rapids back in the uh, uh, canal system that went from Van Wertel Isle to New York, basically. So uh, people all had to use the canal for their, their routing of vehicles, but they weren't vehicles, they were boats. Mm -hmm. And again, in order to have a history and the background of what you you just discussed, uh, we felt it was very important that we had actually paid demonstrators to come there and, uh, and what a wonderful setting to be on that towpath between the village and the, and the river. As a matter of fact, when we first started talking about uh, when I was mayor, I said, what are we going to do? How are we going to make the Grand Rapids work? Because we didn't have a sewer system. We had a water system that wasn't working all that well. And we finally come up to, okay, we don't have buildings, we don't have any major factories, we don't have any of that. What are we? Well, we're a tourist town. We have a canal system, we have a state park, we have a beautiful setting, we got a river. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and use what we have. Right. And that's how it all got started. How about the apple butter itself and Mr. Kreider and his family and how that all came to be? Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, my wife has been my companion all these years and she was right in the middle of all that, getting the apples peeled and stirring the apple mm -hmm. butter and making sure that apple butter got canned and mm -hmm. had all of her girlfriends and all the other folks that was in the historical society doing that work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so consequently, now, my children, I have two daughters, uh, my oldest daughter is basically the I think, secretary or the vice oh. president. I, I can't keep up with them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, and my younger daughter does a lot of the advertising and, uh, and setting up the, when you come into the village, you see certain things that say, welcome to Grand Rapids and all that. Well, she's doing that. So we have, uh, over the years, I think, just embellished a lot of things that our people love to do and love to see. And I've been on airplanes and trains and everything else, and talking to people and saying, where are you from? Grand Rapids. Oh, oh the Apple Butter Fest. Fest. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> so we're well known. But well, the other thing that the Apple Butter Fest does is the money that they make. They've done things within the village. Added the restroom areas. We put some street to work together. We had a lot of signage. Uh, on a weekend, you can see lots of folks that want to come to Grand Rapids, walk up and down the canal, uh, use the towpath, and, and buy a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I the apple butter signage. I remember when I was young, my uncle Lee Box actually painted those and made those apple uh -huh. signs and painted them and. Yeah. And it was so fun to see and watch him do that, and then to still drive there to this day and see those signs. Now, granted, they've been touched up since then, oh, yeah. but it's so nice to see all that. There are swings along the towpath now, so for anybody in the Wood County area or surrounding areas that want to get out for the Apple Butter Fest, and if you haven't been there before, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful. Rain or shine, it's a very fun event. And we've had some eagles move in now. We have a couple of eagle nests, and so it's... You see an eagle almost every time you walk along that river. Really? Wow. Well, I'm excited to see that. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate everything that you've done as far as talking to us about the Apple Butter Fest and how it started. Is there anything that you'd want to leave us with as far as the Apple Butter Fest goes? 
Well, everything is cyclic, I think, in this world as we know it. And you see other organizations saying, well, this may be the last year. We have this problem, that problem. with, And we all are getting older. But this is the 43rd year of the Apple Butter Fest. So whether it's going to continue to go on an upswing or kind of dip here and there, I don't know. Or who's going to take it over when, when uh, my kids and my wife and I we decide we'd want to back out of it a little bit? Why? Those things happen. So you're trying to recruit some new members. Absolutely. Would you like to work? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there at five thirty <laughs> next Sunday morning, running up and down the Masonic steps. <laughs> Good. All right. <laughs> I love it when being really felt. <laughs> but you you uh, asked earlier about uh, why why am I a Republican? Mm -hmm. uh, all my life, I've been around people that had to work for a living and didn't ask for anything, any give. You me, so to speak, and I just, I felt like it's my job to make sure that we continue to have people like that, and a lot of times you get folks who decide, hey, I'm not a Republican, I'm something else, and by the way, you owe me, and so I've tried to help other people all my life, do things that could help other people. I've been on the board of directors at the hospital, uh, at the uh, oh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, the uh, uh, Owens College Foundation, mm -hmm. the, the uh, Foundation for the Fair Board, the Foundation for this, the Foundation for that. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I could tell you a lot of things, but uh, we don't have time. <laughs> I understand. How many years did you serve as commissioner? Twenty. Twenty years. Uh, when I reached my twentieth year, I said, you know what? I'm going to be 76 years old mm -hmm. next month. Mm -hmm. I've been in this position for 20 years. I've helped a lot of people, but you know what? My family is probably going to need me for another year or two. So uh, there's <laughs> a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of meetings goes on yeah. at the commissioner's office, but a lot of the very important meetings. Mm -hmm. When I look back at all the things that I've done, the help things, the thing I'm most proud of, I think, that I was really involved with was the actual going to uh, Springfield, Missouri and talking the Bass Pro folks into coming to Wood County. And, and it worked. And we thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> we love Bass Pro. <laughs> you did a great job. Well, I like it too. <laughs> <laughs> great organization. Well, I'm glad that that's one of the things that you're most proud of. Um, we really thank you for everything that you've done, for all of your service, both local when you started at Grand Rapids and then branched on to Wood County. Wood County's been a huge economic success, and I think you're one of the reasons for that. Bass Pro was one of the ones, one of the things that you that you hit on. I'd like to think that. <laughs> Excuse me. Absolutely. I'd like to think that. Uh, as a matter of fact, in today's Sentinel, Wood County is, I think, the fifth of the safest places, or the, or the, the uh, most, uh, uh, I don't know, I going to say safe so much, but it's health-wise, mm -hmm. and uh, we just done a lot of things on our own here in Wood County that other folks have said, give me, uh, going to the government for this or government for that. And right. We're, we're a hand up, not a hand out. Yeah. Help people. Here you go. Here's what you need to do. Well, good job. Thank you, sir. We really appreciate it. We appreciate everything you've done. Is there any piece that you'd like to leave us with as far as Wood County goes? as we've branched out beyond anything from the commissioner side of things that you want to leave us with. That what I want. One more piece that you want us to know that Wood County Economic Development, besides Bass Pro. We have so many people in Wood County that want to volunteer mm -hmm. to do things. We have a great uh, water and sewer district from some of the folks that wanted to volunteer for that, an economic development district. Uh, I was a member of the, I am yet a member of the uh, uh, the group that, that has uh, all kinds of things that try to keep things going in Wood County. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. Not just in Bowling Green area, but other villages as well. And uh, Buckeye Boy State was there, and I've been a member of Buckeye Boy State as a commissioner for 20 some years. And I was very sad to see him decide to go somewhere else. but. 
As a matter of fact, I'm on the Hall of Fame uh, for the Black Eyed Boys State. Uh, but I think that uh, people just need to help. They need to learn their neighbors. They need to help each other when they can and keep that Republican peace going. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate it.